Bora TV. The world is thinking. And this is the system that I'm working with at the moment. So essentially, these systems are low-tech chemical computers. Um, they're called protocells. Um, essentially, they're, they're models of, cell, of cells. They've kind of come out of the origins of life um, uh, sciences. And they're examples of what we're calling living technology. I'll tell you about that in a minute. So these are the, the living technologies are the ones that possess some but not all of the properties of living systems. They have no DNA. I want you to, 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 to one thing they come away from, they don't need DNA to work. Um, so when you look at the, the film that I'm going to show you in a few minutes, um, just, just bear in mind that all the processes are not driven by DNA. They're based on the chemistry of oils, which is the organic bit, I guess, because um, you know, oils are organic chemistry, but I use inorganic chemistry to do the programming. So we've got inorganic chemistry sitting inside a little blob of oil, which is the organic part, and we can program them. And that, that literally is an environmentally sensitive, three-dimensional set of programming instructions. In other words, we're using parallel computers, parallel processing computers, as opposed to digital computers, which are serial processors, to produce architectural outcomes. Architectural outcomes are only some of the outcomes of this particular system. So that's my protocell technology. I'll just move on. To, so that they, they exist both as single cells, um, but they, they exist in groups as well. So what I'm going to show you as well shows you um, how these um, computers exist as, as individual agents and also as colonies. Because they don't have DNA, there's, there's no fixation on how big um, the, the, the cells have to be. Um, so the architectural properties, they can modify their environment. You can see the trails left. They can shed skins, and they can produce solid materials. This is a, a, a film that I took in the lab. Um, and what I've done is I've programmed these um, cells to make a skin of uh, magnetite. And that is um, a, a magnetic material. It's iron oxide. And literally, I'm using um, kitchen materials to do this. This is extra virgin olive oil, um, some soap, um, some sodium hydroxide, and like I said, some vitamin tablets, soluble iron salts. And as you can see, these agents exist both on a population um, scale, they're, they're exchanging information, chemical instructions, and they, they, they're building these tubes as, uh, as a bottom-up process. Um, and like you, say, like, like you can see here, that they, they exist in colonies, so they're, they're working together to create these tubes. The, the, there's like a, a bean-shaped object at the, at the top um, that, that literally you know, grows this long tail. So I call these my, my artificial worms. No DNA. This is all simple physical chemical processes. Um, there's, you know, there's, there's, it's a very, very, very um, basic um, language here. And, and this is the kind of language that we'd like to use um, to engage within the environment. So I can program to do different things. So I've actually um, worked with a technology this summer that can take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and fix it into a crystalline form. So at the moment we're using these to create protocell pearls. And we're thinking, it's, so, so, so essentially it's like um, re recreating how we'd make limestone. You know, limestone's a, 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 a physical process where you get the accretion of tiny little um, uh, calcium skeletons um, that kind of get layered over each other and they're geological processes that, that create the, the solid material. Well, we can almost recreate that in some ways in, in the laboratory. These are like the little synthetic shells that we're creating. Um, and we've speculated on, a, on an architectural project that we could use it on. And we've thought about sustainably reclaiming Venice. So essentially, we program our, our protocells to move away from the light and we it, it release them into the canals um, so they don't like the light. They go down underneath the wood piles where they um, do their calculations Calculations, they, they create carbon dioxide pearls underneath there. What's neat about this is that they actually start engaging then in a, in a dialogue with um, the, the, the uh, Venetian ecology. And to be quite honest with you, they're, they're, they're biggest, uh, the, the biggest problem is they'll probably be eaten by the local fish. Um, so uh, this, this is a, a scenario, this is a schematic, these are the protocells um, being charged up by energy from light, finding their way into darkened environments, and then over time and working with the um, uh, kind of the movement of the currents, they, they create this um, artificial reef underneath Venice.